Hello everyone, my name is Brian Chong and I'm the pre-sales solutions architect with MicroFocus. Today I want to focus on the search feature within ArcSight Investigate. ArcSight Investigate is our new hunting and security analytic platform for detecting the unknown threats. Now ArcSight Investigate is fast and it's very easy to use. Now when I say fast, Investigate on average is 10 times faster than our competitor's product because it leverages Vertica, which is designed to handle big data queries. Uh, when it comes to easy to use, it's very intuitive and it's a matter of typing in a question or the uh, value that you're looking for. So I'm gonna demonstrate that right now. So what you're seeing on the screen is the ArcSight Investigate logon page. So I'm gonna log on to ArcSight Investigate. Now, when I first log on, it automatically takes me to a, a search page. And within the search page, what it does is that it gives me a starting point and it's asking me, you know, um, uh, what do I want to ask from ArcSight Investigate? And it gives you examples of questions or search queries. Um, what I want to say is that if you have done Google search or you have done a search within YouTube, then you should have no issue performing searches on ArcSight Investigate because that's how easy it is to do a search in ArcSight Investigate. All we're going to do is specify a, um, a value and it's going to give you various recommendations that you can select from. Uh, similar to when you do a Google search or when you do a search on YouTube, as you type in the strings, uh, the, uh, the 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 Google or YouTube will give you various recommendations um, as you type in the string, and then as you um, get more specific or as you type in more strings, um, the recommendations are narrowed to a more specific searches you're doing. Uh, same same case for ArcSight Investigate Investigate as well. Um, at the same time, um, there's really no reason to uh, uh, learn a, uh, a complex language or database schema. Again, it's because you're just typing in the questions or typing in the value that you are looking for. Um, you don't have to worry about uppercase or lowercase that automatically is taken care of in ArcSight Investigate. So let me show you an example. So in the um, uh, my search box here, if I don't type in anything, then it gives you recommendations on the various fields that ArcSight Investigate supports. Now what I'm going to do is, let's say I start typing ST. Now what this does is that ArcSight Investigate is giving you recommendations on the fields that contain the characters ST. If I go and type in STE, then the search is more narrowed because ArcSight Investigate automatically recognizes that STE is not part of the field name. So it must be, it must be a value with the string type. So it gives you all the recommendations where um, the, the, the field um, is gonna take a string type. So here, um, it could be a, a source username, destination username, or any username. This is where you know, you're looking for um, events with characters STE, and you're not sure if this string is part of the source username or part of destination username. At the same time, it may not be a username. It could be a, a host name or it could be a, a domain name. Now, if I keep going further, I'll type in the word string, then um, I could pretty much tell that this could be either host name or a, a username. So let's just say, you know what? I'm going to select any username equals Steve. So I select on it. Once I select on this, um, I could change the operands if I wanted to. So if you click on the equal sign, again, it gives you a drop down menu or recommendation based on you know what should you know what operand uh, you want to select. So here I could search on any username equals Steve. And um, uh, you know, the, 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 the outside investigate doesn't care if it is uppercase or lowercase. Uh, it's case insensitive, so it's going to find anything with 
uh, the string Steve on the uh, the username field. Now, what if instead of string, I'm going to type in a a number? So if I just type in an integer number two, then our site investigate will give me all the fields that contain the integer number two. If I go and type in 22, then now uh, the recommendations uh, for your choice has changed because our site investigate automaker recognizes that there is no field uh, that contains the integer 22, but there are fields with, that will take an uh, integer type. So 22 could be uh, any port, destination port, source port, or translated port. So um, if I want to see all the uh, secure shell traffic, I could say destination port equals 22. Then this will give me all the events uh, where um, uh, traffic is targeting uh, via port 22. Next, uh, let's do one more thing here. Let's do 10 and I'm going to put a decimal. So here, uh, ArcSight Investigate recognizes that this is a, uh, a decimal number. So it's going to give you all the fields with the, the, uh, the decimal type. Now, if I go and type in another 1010, this is 10.10. 10. So again, it's a, it's a, um, the value type is a decimal. So again, it, it's going to give you a field names that will take the decimal type. What if I type in another dot? Then ArcSight Investigate now recognizes the fact that, hey, this is not a decimal uh, number. This is actually a, um, a format of an IP address. So it's going to give you all the fields that will accept um, IP address type. So here, you know, it could be a source address, destination address. So even though I haven't finished typing my IP address, it automatically recognizes that it is an IP address type. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, select a, I'm going to define a subnet because uh, one of the most popular requests that I get is um, searching traffic within a, a specific subnet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, define a subnet. So again, just type in an IP address. Just easy as typing in an IP address. So I'm defining a subnet. And then uh, out of from all these recommendations, I'm going to say, okay, you know what? I'm going to say any IP because I want to see all the events to and from the specific subnet that, um, that I'm looking for. Now here's the, so here's the query. The next thing I want to do is that I have to change the operand. Because when you're searching within a subnet, then the operand is not equals, but we have an operand called in subnet. The last thing you want to do is whenever you define a subnet, you have to define a subnet mask. So it's 24. Now I'm going to do a search. And here is the, uh, the search, search time or the search duration. Now, uh, my uh, test events are all generated within the month of April. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change from last 30 minutes to uh, the month of April. So I'm going to specify uh, April 1st through 30th. So just a matter of uh, changing the, the date and then perform a search. So click on search button. And here is where you see the, um, the, uh, the status of the query that's going on right now. And I'm going to click on this custom range one more time to hide this uh, um, the time ranges. Okay, searching. So right now it has found 626 matching events. Now, once I have this uh, search created, I could save this and I could use it again. So right now the default name is search for. Now, if I uh, if I go to uh, if I point my mouse cursors to near search for string, there's this uh, pencil icon. If I click on this, then I could actually give it a name. So I could say this is a um, workstation subnet. Uh, 
10.0.111.0. And then I'm going to click on this checkbox to um, save this search. OK. So now uh, it gives me a uh, status message that says um, this I have successfully uh, saved uh, this search with this specific query. The next thing I want to do is let's look at some of the IP addresses. So I'm going to scroll down and these are uh, the results that it returned. And if I look at destination address and let's say, hmm, you know what? I want to see within this subnet, I just want to see all the uh, hosts in that subnet uh, that's owned, that's that's going toward this external IP address. So now I have to apply another filter or condition. So all I'm going to do is right mouse click, and I could either use use as a filter or search for this specific IP address. So we're going to do the, we're going to go through each um, option. If I select use as a filter, so I click on this. Then what happens is that if I scroll up a little bit this condition has been automatically added as an ad hoc filter. So, um, uh, you know, my, uh, my initial safe search has this subnet, and by adding this filter, it's not going to change the, um, the safe search, the, the, the safe search um, or the search that I saved. So if I click on apply here, then what happens is that this additional condition is added to this um, safe search. Now, um, from 626 events to I get two events. And if I scroll down and you look at the destination address, so I see two events that are targeting uh, this IP address. And by default, uh, I'm using a, a default field set. And these are all um, uh, in alphabetical order. And I could also see that, okay, this is my destination address. What is my source IP or source host name? I'm going to scroll to the right. And I just have two systems that are going into that external, um, external uh, website. Uh, I could even go one further and add additional um, ad hoc filters as well. So by looking at this, I could say, um, and, you know, what are the application protocols? Or I could even add a, so I could just right mouse click and say use um, uh, application protocol as a filter as well. So if I click on that, then another ad hoc filter is um, created. And if you hit apply, then now you have two, fil two um, temporary filters that are uh, utilized uh, based on my um, safe search uh, workstation subnet. OK, now um, removing this ad hoc filter is fairly simple. You could just click on remove all or just click on the X. I'm going to say remove all. Now I'm going to go back, and there were second options to um, add a, uh, a filter. So I'm going to go back, and I'm going to go to the destination address again. And then when, this time, what I'm going to do is right mouse click, and instead of selecting the first option, which is use as filter, I'm going to say search for, and then the destination IP address. If I do this, then what happened is that now that additional condition is added to my um, ex existing safe search. So now I have two conditions where um, you know, search an event within this specific subnet and destination uh, going to the 74.126 um, subnet or, or 74.126.144.80 address. Um, I could just do a search again. And then now it's going to um, uh, match any events uh, for these two conditions. And then here it says uh, two matching events. 
and then here it is. Now, if I click on save, then now my um, my save search will have uh, this destination address as an additional uh, search criteria um, uh, for this save search. Um, uh, if I don't save it, then again, this, this destination address is just ad hoc. So I'm going to pretty much um, delete that right now and then just keep the, uh, the original query. Now I could even just go and create a new search. So let's click on new search. And now search for popped up. Now with search for, again, it, 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 it gives you, you know, a starting direction on how to start. Now, if you want to utilize the existing save searches, then you just type in pound. Now, if you type in pound, these are all the save searches. Some of them are default, some of them are custom. And at the very bottom is the, um, the, the save searches that I saved. So you could, you know, reuse the, uh, the viewer that you have created, uh, you know, many, many times um, if you create a, a save search. And then again, I got to specify my time frame for April. And click on search. So here's the status of the query. Okay. So again, same result, right? Because uh, I uh, now instead of uh, manually typing in my search criteria, I'm just bringing back the save searches uh, that I have performed. So 626 matches. Uh, the other uh, quick, fast, uh, easy feature within the uh, uh, investigate search is this. Let's look at destination address. And I want to see uh, which destination address are most chattiest. So I want to see either top 10 or you know bottom 10. With investigate, it's just a matter of selecting the field, right mouse click, and there is a, uh, a feature for preview top bottom. So if I click on this, it gives you the, uh, the chattiest IP addresses, view top 10. If I go to... Um, one right next to view top 10 is view bottom 10. This is so some you know there are times where you want to view the bottom 10 just to see um, you know there the one you know those one offs where it could be uh, you know you're looking for a needle in the haystack. Now this is very fast because once you have done the search, the the preview for um, viewing top 10 and bottom 10 are are, are generated from the results that we have just got from the query. So when you perform a query, that entire result resides in memory. So within memory, we could gather, um, you know, various data uh, easily and quickly. Uh, and this is this just this just doesn't apply to the searches or this quick uh, preview or sorting. Uh, it also applies to our visualizations. Uh, which is data, data analytics that I will be covering on part two of this video. So you could easily do top 10 on any of the uh, fields that you see uh, in our site investigate. Uh, destination port, let's do a quickly uh, top 10. And as you can see, uh, th there are 604 events that doesn't have a uh, destination port, but the next one up is um, uh, there's 18 events that are targeting port 443. And of course, uh, if you only want to see port 443, then you right mouse click and just specify, you know, search for 443. If I do that, if I scroll up, uh, it at a destination port equals 443. The next cool thing that I really like 
um, which is available in ArcSight Investigate, is the freeze pane feature within ArcSight Excel. Not ArcSight Excel, I'm, sp I'm sorry, but the uh, a spreadsheet. Because there are times where I had to um, export the events out to a spreadsheet and do, and, and do some data manipulation. Uh, with ArcSight Investigate, uh, let's say I'm looking at uh, destination port or destination host name. So I can just right mouse click and select make sticky. So what that does is that it freezes the field destination host name and I could just scroll um, the rest of the fields and do a simple comparison. So I could say, okay, destination host name, uh, here are all the destination addresses associated with this host name. And I could also make this, uh, make it sticky. And then I could also go and say, okay, I want to see all the source IPs that are associated with that destination address and host name. So I scroll all the way to the right. And here's my source address and source host name. I could scroll down and do a comparison, or I could just make it a sticky. And then again, I could just compare other fields with these three sticky columns um, that I have um, uh, added on to it. Okay, so um, I think I pretty much covered everything in the, um, the search features within ArcSight Investigate. So just to reiterate, reiterate, search is very intuitive and very easy in ArcSight Investigate. I think just from the demo that I showed you, uh, we can safely say that you know, if you know how to do a Google search or search specific topic in YouTube, uh, you can use ArcSight Investigate without any issue. It's a matter of typing the value and it gives you all the recommended um, query that you could select from. So it's that intuitive. Uh, it, it it does all the heavy lifting for heavy lifting for you. So for you know for as a user, you just type in the value that you're looking for, select the recommendation query, and you're off to the races. Um, uh, you know viewing um, you know top ten or bottom ten is very easy. It's just a matter of right mouse clicking the uh, the the field itself and selecting you know. Uh, top 10 or bottom 10. Um, uh, adding additional filters is fairly easy. You're just right mouse clicking the uh, the field that you want to add it into the uh, uh, your um, search criteria. So you know when you do a search, I believe uh, it takes at most maybe two mouse clicks for you to um, do the searches. So um, again, it, it's just it's just you know very very intuitive, uh, easy to use, and um, you know uh, it, it's case insensitive, so you don't have to worry about um, if it has to be uppercase or lowercase. Nor do you have to remember uh, a schema name or uh, query languages because it it automatically provides that information for you based on the uh, data type that you select. Um, so hopefully, um, I hope that this video uh, gives you a, a good understanding of how to um, perform searches in Outside Investigate. Um, the part two of this video, I will go into the next step of doing data analytics, because you could have hundreds, thousands, or millions of uh, results in in um, in any platform. But then now, you know, how do you how do you leverage those results? How do we make sense out of it? That's when um, analytics becomes very useful as well as visualization. Um, thank you, everyone. Bye.